hello hi feels like it's been forever i'm sure you're wondering where uh did your walk go uh, i moved actually so i'm in a, a different place it's still being set up i've been gone for a while um but i'm back and i wanted to kind of start off with a light-hearted video um something that's easy because to be honest the first series was a lot of work and i put a lot of time and energy into it and and that's great but what happened afterwards was that i got burned out a little bit actually i got burned out a lot uh so yeah that's why i've been gone for so long but i still have plans for this series i still have ideas i already have what next musicals i'd like to do uh so don't worry that's coming but I thought this would be a great opportunity, kind of, since Broadway is opening back up, to talk about some of the Broadway plays, black plays, that are opening and kind of seeing what that means and just talking about them. Like I said, this I, I'm, I didn't do any research. I didn't do any research. So don't expect this to be like an analysis because that's not what it is. It's just news about more black Broadway. Anyways. There are six, by the way, I'm chaotic. <laughs> I am a chaotic person, so I, I know it doesn't seem like that, but I am. Anyways, <laughs> there's six shows that are coming to Broadway, um, black playwrights, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, the first one is called Passover. It's only going to be on Broadway for nine weeks. Uh, and I actually do kind of have some familiarity with Passover because it premiered in Chicago, which is where I live, and it premiered like my freshman year of college. So it was kind of like the buzz, like everybody was talking about it in the art scene when I first came here. And there was a lot of controversy around it, not necessarily the show, but like controversy around like reviewers and critics, which honestly needed to happen. It's honestly we still need more conversations about white critics that review shows and I think I've mentioned that in my black musical series uh, but that was like the big buzz um and so I kind of knew the show from that way and also it was sold out like I couldn't even get a ticket to see it but the really cool thing about Passover is even if you were not going to see it on Broadway you can actually see the film version which was um directed by Spike Lee personally I really liked the film like I like the cuts and I feel like it works really well as a like stage film i think spike lee does a really good job of filming plays and making them feel like movies because like there's something about plays that don't translate well to film i don't think and i think the passover version does now other people disagree but i do personally like it um i also want to say that i did look at the director um and i do find it interesting so basically the director who's doing the show on Broadway also did the original one at Steppenwolf, uh, but she's white, and I feel some type of way about this. I do not, not. I'm sure. She, I mean, she did a great job. Her directing style was very great. But I do. I, I feel again, as I talked about with my Black Musical series, is like representation is great, and I love seeing Black playwrights and I love seeing Black actors. But I also feel like we need to step up when it comes to Black directors, Black like they're out there so why not hire them to do these shows and particularly black women black women directors are everywhere but yet they're nowhere on broadway and it's just very confusing to me and i know that this is the og director but i just feel like maybe you could have given somebody else a chance just my opinion no shade please if the playwright sees this i don't want any shade i do like this show <laughs> but anyways let me give you a synopsis so it says the new play, in the new play, Moses and Kitch talk smack past time and hope that maybe they will be different. Maybe the day will be different. As they dream of their promised land, a stranger wanders in their space and disrupts their plans, evoking heartbreak, hope, and joy over its 85 minutes. Passover crafts everyday profanities into poetic and humorous riffs, illuminating the unquestionable human spirit of men looking for a way out. That's an interesting synopsis. <laughs> I don't know if that's how I would word it, but I mean, I get it for marketing sake. You kind of have to say it like that. Um, okay. Personally, like I said, I do like the show. I've seen it before, not in person, but, you know, filmed. And I was living in Chicago, still am, when, you know, it was going on. But the show 
is very traumatic like this is not <laughs> heartbreak is not what i would call it <laughs> it's it's tra it's traumatic like the end i'm laughing because i'm uncomfortable like the ending is very much traumatic it is not happy it's it's very triggering for black audiences and i think that black audiences deserve to know that maybe you know they're getting into some like really triggering stuff and this synopsis isn't really doing that so what i'll tell you is is that it's dark very dark and this is nothing to do with passover but i do feel like maybe broadway has some issues with like really leaning into like black trauma and black pain they really like doing that and i'm sure i'll do another video about that um soon but it, like passover is good i think that it is a good show that happens to be very traumatic but i still ask myself at the end of the day how much trauma do we really need to see like black people in because passover almost toes the line it's it doesn't toe the line exactly for me like i like the show but it's like ooh, how much you know how much how much are we gonna do so passover is coming to broadway don't think i said but passover is gonna be at the same theater that mean girls was at i don't know what theater that is but you can look it up which i kind of find really funny it's just like we went from mean girls to passover completely two different shows but I get it. Okay, the next show that's coming, I hope I'm saying this right, is Lackawanna Blues. So as I was filming this, I actually realized that there's also a movie called Lackawanna Blues that's by the same um, person, Ruben Santiago. It is on HBO Max, so I might have to watch that and give my opinion, but I just wanted to put that out there that there is a movie that it's kind of based on, so that's actually really fun. Um, the synopsis says the Tony Award winner Ruben Santiago Hudson returns to the MTC for the Broadway debut of his brilliant solo play celebrating the strong, big-hearted woman who raised him, Miss Rachel. In a 1950s boarding house outside Buffalo, Nanny, as she was affectionately called, opened her doors to anyone and everyone in need of kindness, hope, compassion, and care. Um, it also has live music, which is cool, and I, I did look at some of the like crew um i mean the cast is only one person but i did look at the crew and it does seem to be there, there seems to be some black people sprinkling there mostly men um but i mean i it's interesting personally i it's not my type of show but i mean there's a show for everyone maybe take the take, take your dad take your grandpa to this show i hope that he i hope that everybody does not see this video because that sounded like shade and it was not it's not shade i was just saying you know like maybe you got a family member who doesn't like broadway you take him to see this they'll like it they'll like the show it's nice um i like that there's you know it seems great it's not it doesn't have trauma I, i'm into that so so the next show that's also appearing on broadway is called thoughts of a colored man um i have to say the cast and the crew for this show looks so good like if i i wish i had money because i would see this show <laughs> like i don't i don't have a huge idea what it is but like the cast and the crew looks so good like it's, it's some of my favorite people so i'm into it i will say though again it does lack the narrative of black women it's not a lot of black women shows come there's not a lot but this show looks good. The synopsis goes, as the sun rises on a single day in the pulsing heart of Brooklyn, seven black men are about to discover the extraordinary together. By Keenan Scott II, one of today's boldest new voices, thoughts of a colored man blend spoken word, slam poetry, rhythm, and humor into a daringly universal new play. Welcome to the vibrant inner life of being black, proud, and thriving in the 21st century. Again, I don't like the synopsis probably just has some of the worst and i just it, i it's there's certain words that are that i'm picking up that are annoying to me for instance like universal or the vibrant in our life of being black like why do we have to say that why what do you mean universal that this is not universal this is a black narrative and experience i don't see why we need to mark it as universal people are just gonna see it anyways anyways 
I I really think that the show is going to be good. I like the fact that it blends all of these things together. It sounds so good. The cast looks great. Like, I, I don't know anything about it. I hope that it's not, you know, traumatic. But it does, unfortunately, being black does often have traumatic events. So, but, like, it looks good. And I like this, like, surrealism, slam poetry, rhythm kind of narrative. So, I'm into it. So the fourth play that is premiering on Broadway is called Trouble in Mine and it's actually written by a black woman playwright so super cool it it's directed by Charles Randolph Wright which I guess is interesting again I mean I love to see black people you know what I'm saying but I'm just trying to figure out like why didn't know a woman why didn't they get a black woman to direct this like I, but I don't understand I don't understand that but okay uh, but basically the synopsis says the play follows an experienced black stage actress the rehearsals of a major Broadway production as it examines racism identity and ego in the world of New York theater it actually ran off of Broadway um, on off-Broadway in 1955 and it had a Broadway run that was set for 1957 but it just never made it to the stage um, I'm super super excited for this show also LaShawn is going to be in it like it sounds really good and I mean I love like Broadway black history so knowing that the show was supposed to like actually have a premiere in 1957 but then just never happened like that's that's a story in itself I also want to say that um Kathy A Perkins is doing lights I'm into it get your check I love to see it um and yeah, I'm, I mean, as you can tell, I'm actually very excited for the show. I wish I could see it. I just don't have money. Number five is called The Skeleton Crew. The show also has a black woman playwright, so yay. It's actually going to be directed by Ruben Santiago Hudson, who is also doing the one-man show. So good for you again. You're getting your check, and I, I love to see it. Get it. Um, so basically, um, it's going to be starring Felicia Rashad, who's going to be returning to Broadway. It's at the Manhattan Theater Club. Um, and it is going to be about, the synopsis says, in 2008, Detroit, a auto small automotive factory is on the brink of foreclosure. And a tight-knit family of workers hangs in the balance. With uncertainty everywhere, the line between blue collar and white collar becomes blurred. And this working family must reckon with their personal loyalties, their instincts of survival, and their ultimate hopes for humanity. Who wouldn't want to see Felicia Rashad? I mean, she said some things this year. She said some things that I, I'm not proud of. And I'm hoping that we work on that. But anyways, still love to see her act in things. Um, the show sounds great. I'm very excited to see it. It kind of reminds me of, oh, what's that show? Sweat by Lynn Nottage. If it's anything like that, I'm into it because I love Sweat by, by Lynn Nottage. And we'll be talking about Lynn Nottage in like another second. But this sounds great. I mean, excited to see it shine. Like, sounds good. So the next show is called Clyde and it's written by Lynn Nottage and it's set in a truck stop sandwich shop where formerly incarcerated kitchen staff has a shot at redemption which sounds really good. It's supposed to be funny and stirring. I mean this sounds like a very Lynn Nottage show but like I love that I eat it up. I also feel like I have to be fair since I've done it to every other show, but the director for this show is also not black, nor is it a black woman, which is, I mean, kind of like drop the ball. I feel like this is such a great chance to include black women in directing, and we just like didn't do it. But she did help Lynn Nottage when it came to Sweat, which, I mean, she's very talented, obviously, but again, I think representation is important on all fronts, and that wasn't included in this, so. The cast looks so good. It has Uzo Aduba who is so good, so good, I, I'm like it. Again, another show that I would see if I could, I wish, um, but like the cast looks so good. And the thing about like Lynn Nottage too is like you have to have good actors who like can build up on tension and like, yeah, like if you don't have those type of people, like they just won't work, but I think that like this is such a good, such a good cast like you couldn't have asked for anybody better oh and ron cephas jones is also going to be in it which like we love to see it last the last show that is premiering is one that i'm most excited for and if i could if i could buy a ticket for any show 
it would be this one. It's called Chicken and Biscuits. For some reason, I wrote Chicken and Boskets. I mean that too. Um, and it is a um, family comedy full of laughter and love starring um, Norm Lewis and Michael Urie. The Jenkins family is coming together to celebrate life of their father, hopefully without killing each other. But any hopes for a peaceful union unravel when a family secret shows up at the funeral. Also, this is the playwright, which I think is important to show. And here is also the director. I just, it sounds like it's gonna be funny, but also like, I love seeing black family, like comedy plays. I just think they're really fun. Like um, Denai Guerrero has a really good, it's called Homecoming. I think that's what it's called. I always get it wrong, but it's, it's one of those. But she has a show that I'm hoping Chicken and Biscuits is kind of going to be similar to. Um, although, not every black show has to be the same. But I just like that kind of like pulling and pushing of tension and like black comedy because it's kind of hard. Like when I go to see shows and like it's mainly like a white family, I don't always have like the comedy doesn't always land because I'm not that way with my family. Versus like there's things that just happen culturally, you know, that only happen to black families and you want to see yourself represented and that goes for other families too um to see themselves represented is so important so i love seeing shows like this best and also the seven shows that will be premiering on broadway i think earlier i said six but it's it's seven um and they all look promising i mean again there's gaps of course there's things that could be better the synopsis could be written better but like it is nice my hope is that this continues i don't just want to see this year six we get seven you know black playwrights black shows and then next year it's gone like i want this to continue and i want this to continue for other people as well too like let's hope that this is not just a trend and that it continues on um but yeah that's that's my video for today i hope you enjoyed i hope you enjoyed my chaotic energy because this is what it's like when i don't plan and when i don't have a script <laughs> Um, and yeah, let me know what you think about these shows. <laughs> Bye.